Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this, those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and south. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds. Let them sacrifice thank offerings and tell of his works with songs of joy. Let's stand for hymn number 480 in the Moravian Book of Worship. Please remain standing and turn to page 165 for the liturgy for baptism. We are very pleased this morning to welcome Salem Victoria Schoon, the daughter of Joseph and Megan Schoon, who was born January 9th of this year in Sturgeon Bay, welcoming her into our church family by the sacrament of infant baptism. Salem is a granddaughter of Bill Schoon, Amy Tachik, and Scott and Michelle Wetak. Her sponsors are Jennifer Nelson and Molly Blonick. And we are also pleased this morning to welcome Joseph William Schoon through the sacrament of adult baptism. In grace, God called and chose the people of Israel and established with them a covenant. I will be your God and you will be my people. In that relationship, they were to be freed from sin and become a blessing to all. Then God came to us in Jesus Christ and fulfilled that covenant for all people. Through Christ's life, death, and resurrection, God made for us a new covenant of grace. We come before you with the joy of God, to claim the promises of your covenant. Our Lord Jesus Christ instituted baptism as a visible means of entry into the new covenant. Baptism is a gift of God. In this sacrament, through grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, we are united with Christ, are cleansed by his saving work, 
enter into the fellowship of the church and are called to a life of faith and willing obedience. Those of you baptized into Christ Jesus, how were you baptized? Into his death. We were buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glorious power of God Almighty, we too might be raised to live in the life. In baptism, children also share in the benefits of our Lord's redeeming work through God's grace and the faith of parents and of the church. For God's promises to us and to our children. For our candidate, parents, and sponsors. As you present yourselves before God in this congregation, we call upon you to profess your faith. Do you believe in God as your creator and loving Heavenly Father, in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, and in the Holy Spirit as your comforter and sustainer, according to the Holy Scriptures. Lord, make us one with all your children as we profess our faith, saying, I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And again, for the candidate, parents, and sponsors. Do you, in this faith, turn away from sin, evil, and selfishness in your thoughts, words, and actions? And do you intend to participate actively in Christ's church, serving God all the days of your life? Amen. Relying on the power of the Holy Spirit, do you promise to lead your child by prayer, instruction, and example toward that time when she can, by grace, confirm her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and commit herself to the life and work of the church. Thank you. And for the congregation. Do you receive and affirm these children of God as members of this congregation and accept your obligation to love and nurture them in Christ? Thank you. Please be seated. Son in the waters of the Jordan. We praise you for opening up to us the way of eternal life that through his death and re resurrection. Now send your spirit upon Salem and Joseph, who receive the waters of baptism today, so that they may become living, growing, and active members of your church, rise to new life, and be led and nourished by your word and sacraments, and share in your eternal blessings. 
and give to these parents and sponsors the strength and wisdom and that with love and understanding they may guide the Christian maturity to the young wife entrusted in their care. Joseph William Schoon, into the death of Jesus, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now, through God's grace and the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, you have been brought into the covenant. Therefore live, yet not you alone, but Christ live in you. And the life you live now, live by faith in the Son of God, who loved you and gave himself for you. Joseph, you're text for today for baptism is Romans 8 28 and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose may the Lord bless you and keep you may the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace <laughs> Soon. Into the death of Jesus, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now, through God's grace and the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, you've been brought into the covenant. Therefore, live, yet not you alone, but Christ live in you. And you live the life now, live by faith in the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This time, Dorian Dallas and the Lord Elders will come forward to light the baptismal candle. The candle his birthday candle. It's a reminder, a reminder that today is Salem and Joey's birth into the life of faith in this church.
Good morning. How are all of you today? Good. So, um, our lesson today is pretty exciting. Um, it talks about how God searches for us. So, I put some clues in the sanctuary that we might need to search for to learn our lesson today. If you're looking towards the back there, you notice anything different? Huh? Yeah? What do you see? You see paper? Yeah. Can you read that paper from here? You can? My heart, very good. Well, I can't read that from here. Oh, okay. Ben, can you read that from here? Any of those? How about that one on the back wall up there? All right. Well, here, I brought you some help. Binoculars. All right. So, I want you to first tell us what it says up there behind Mrs. Rowe's head. What does that say? Uh Uh-oh. Can you focus them? Oh, search. It says, search me. Yeah, okay. How about somebody want to do the one in the middle? Anyone? 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 Thank you. Good. One by the clock. It says, search me, God. And what's the one by the clock say? Having a hard time? You can move it, yeah. Yeah, move it all around. Whatever you got to do. You can't see it? Oh. Here, let me see if I can see it. Mm. Uh, let's see. No, I can't even see it. Oh, there it is. And no. Okay. So what was it? And no. And no, that's right. Search me, God. And no. And then, anybody want to try for that one up on the wall at the very back there? My heart. My heart. All right. There we go. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Now, the neat thing about this psalm today, it took us a little bit of work to try to find that and see it. But the psalm today is wonderful because it talks about how God can see us wherever we go. No matter how far away we are, God is with us and present. It's not even that hard for God. He doesn't have to have binoculars to focus in to see us. Um, He's watching us all the time. And that should give us a great deal of comfort and joy as we think about our lives of faith. Let's have a little prayer together and send you off. Search us and know our hearts, O God. Thank you for these wonderful young people, for the joy that we have in knowing that you are present and involved and you see us from afar. And we are grateful for your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming up.
Uh, <clears throat> just before church, uh, Sharon Sullivan, who helps set things up for church, came to the office and she asked me, she said, there's a piece of paper up by the clock. Do you want me to take that down? God must have been with me because instead of saying, well, I shouldn't be there, just throw it away, I, I said, well, maybe you better go ask Matt. <laughs> Otherwise, we would have had a little hole in the, in the children's message. But certainly God does search our hearts, and God knows what is in our hearts. And when we bring him our offerings and our thanksgiving, we are certainly revealing what we hold in our hearts. I'd ask that our ushers come forward and serve us, please, as we worship our Lord with our tithes and our offerings. pray. Gracious Lord, we know that you see what is in our hearts and on our minds. And so when we bring you these gifts of thanksgiving, it is more about us speaking to ourselves and expressing our thanks and giving our praise than it is about revealing anything to you that you don't already know. We are thankful for your presence in this congregation and in our lives. We are thankful for the gift of Salem this morning. We would ask that you be with her and her father and mother and that you bless them with a long and happy life together as a family that worships you. We would ask that you be with the families of Armin Tipler and Orville Kugler, that you bring them peace and comfort in their time of grief. We'd ask they be with our mission team as they return from Honduras and you grant them safe travel. We are thankful for the work that they have done. And we would ask that you be with Kathy Wickman as she recovers from surgery that she had this week. 
and that you be with Roy and Mary Aiken as Roy faces surgery this Thursday. We ask you to be with those who care for him and that you bless their hands, their minds, and touch their hearts. We ask you to be with all those who are ill or suffering or persecuted and that you bring peace to our world. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Scripture reading today is from Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in, behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. 
I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you would slay the wicked, O God! Away from me, you bloodthirsty men! They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and abhor those who rise up against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is an offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I had the opportunity to have a little face time this morning with uh, two of our folks in Honduras, uh, Andy Starr and Brian Stevens. Um, it was uh, wonderful to hear from them, to see them. They uh, confessed to being tired, also feeling very blessed. Uh, they have accomplished a great deal of the work that they had set out to do in terms of the water project. Uh, but as I expected, the most important time, though, was spent with children at the school. I always expect that it comes back for most of our mission teams. And uh, I know that it was a good trip because they were already talking to me about the new things that God is calling us to do in Awas. So uh, look forward to hearing from them. We have a, actually have a film team from Door County that has been videotaping this trip. And uh, you'll be able to see much more of that in depth um, over on Facebook or YouTube. So please be sure to look forward to that. One of the uh, first and most important games that we play with an infant is that we will uh, toss a blanket over her face and then we'll say, where's Salem? And then, of course, you yank the blanket away and proclaim, I see you. And she will giggle and gurgle and, <laughs> and that game can go on and on and on and on. Babies can't get enough of it. But, you know, as she gets older, she will inevitably start playing hide-and-seek, probably with her cousin Thomas back there or with her friends. And uh, she'll probably end up, at some point, I know she'll end up playing it in this sanctuary in the dark, like the high school kids were doing on Wednesday night, as they always do. But what is it that the searcher says when they discover those who are hiding? They yell out, I see you. And when she's old enough and she has learned how important it is to try sneak cookies or brownies off of the cooling rack, her grandmother will stop and look at her and say, I see you. And at some point in time, she will stand up here and she will be singing Morning Star some Christmas Eve, just like her mom did. And she will look out at the glow, the glow of the candlelight, and she'll see tears running down the faces of not just her family, but of all of us as she helps us welcome the Christ child. And she will know, as she has stood here, that she has been seen, that she is known, that she is a blessing. One of the greatest hungers, and I think also the greatest fears, that human beings carry around in them is wrapped up in this idea of being seen or not being seen, being known or not being known. Because the truth of it is, is until you see me, see me truly, I really don't exist to you. One of our penultimate struggles as human beings is to be known not just by all the labels and the things that define human beings in this world, not just by race or gender or orientation but to be known for who we truly are, to be valued, to have significance, for who we are not on the surface, where we can be objectified for our appearance, but who we are at the very core of our being. 
Now, hopefully, as we've worked through these many chapters over these many weeks, you've picked up a very clear and consistent primary narrative in Scripture. God desires intimacy with all of us. In this psalm, I love this psalm. This psalm is one of the most intimate poems that in unrivaled perfection confesses how well God knows us. You know, we live in a time where we put a great deal of energy and time into presenting ourselves, our opinions, through all different kinds of media. Social interaction has always been, in some ways, superficial. The only difference now is that we can put out a complete facade for the world to see and have access to if we wish, but that is not the real us. As much as we may yearn to be seen and understood, there's also many things that at times we feel we want to hide about ourselves. For good reasons, or often for not. There are things that we may be ashamed of. There may be selfishness or pride, prejudice or fears, anxieties. Things that we don't want the world to know about who we are. So the question this morning is this. Who really sees? Who really knows us? Who loves us when they see and know everything? When they see it all and know it all? The psalmist gives us the answer that that would be God. Psalm 139 expresses the depth of how God knows us. We are told here that the Lord discerns who we are. He understands who we are. And then to each and every one of us, he gives a purpose. And there's nothing superficial here. We are known. We are seen. (laughs) You have searched me, O Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You understand my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out, my lying down. You are familiar with my ways. Before a word comes out of my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. Boy, that's a bummer if you think about that. (laughs) This intimacy described by the psalmist, is given, though, as an expression of comfort and contentment, love. Because in this bond, there is freedom. You know, so often in relationships, there can be moments where we, in friendships or whatever, you feel like you're in a cross-examination. Where were you? Who were you with? Where did you else did you go? Teenagers, you ever hear this? What were you thinking? What did he say? Why did you say that? Why did you do that? God roams over us and sees all. God roams the interior, our interior life, like a hot shower after a hard day's work where it's all seen and it's all known and it doesn't need to be explained because God gets us. So wherever we go or whatever we do, we are not alone. Is there any place I can go to avoid your spirit, to be out of your sight? I could climb up to the sky. You're there. I could go underground. You were there. If I flew on the morning's wings to the far west horizon, you'd find me in a minute. You're already there waiting. This is contentment, confidence, freedom, and ultimately, very importantly, it then provides each of us with purpose. Every one of us has a reason and purpose in the kingdom of God. There is a reason why he, as it was written today, created your innermost being. A reason why he knit you together in your mother's womb. Every person who hears these words, please pay attention to this. It says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. The thing is, we question and we wrestle with that. We do. You may struggle with the meaning and purpose of your life. You may feel that by your losses and griefs, by your bad decisions or uncontrollable circumstances, you may have lost a meaning and purpose that you were confident of before. But it's important for us to remember, though we may not completely understand the totality of who and where we are or where we're going, or feel that we have a sense of control and a deep knowledge of purpose and meaning, we still have it in God. Our view of ourselves, 
our view of ourselves, friends, is so limited. We comprehend very little of the bigger picture of our lives. Consider Salem again this morning. What is it that brought her before the Lord today? <laughs> we can point to a beautiful October day when her mom and dad made their promises and vows of marriage. But that's only part of the story, and she doesn't know any of these stories yet. No, we could point to that, but it goes far deeper than that. Before that, there was the love between her parents that they feel for one another. There's the incredible love of her father that on this day, he would make a profession of faith so that he could fully share that life of faith with her. There's so much more. There's so much more than what we see in a moment. What about Salem's grandparents and all of the aunties and uncles and cousins and filling up the whole right side of the church. Their love, their faith, how their story shapes her story. And God is in all of that. <laughs> and Salem, I cannot wait till you're old enough when I can tell you about your great-grandparents, Don and Nancy, who I felt walking with me up and down the aisle this morning. Oh, the laughter in their kitchen. Grandpa Don beating on cars out in the backyard. How uh, I would hear this loud horn blast every time they would drive by in their giant RV known as the pig. That's how they'd let me know where they were going and when they were coming home. But most importantly, Salem, is of their incredible faith and love and passion for their Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, I share all that with you because every one of you, every one of you have that same story. You have that same lineage, even though you only see right now in part of who you are or where you might be going. You carry behind you all of the love and God's grace that has walked with those who walked before you. We cannot even begin to fathom the vastness of God's love and concern for us. For if in one child there is this great story of God's work in her life and the love that brought her to today, God knows infinitely more about you. All the pathways of your life, God has been there. Each and every one of us is fearfully and wonderfully made. One would hope that the byproduct of this intimacy with God would be that if we had that security and that hope, that we would be courageous people, that we would dare to do good things, that we would dare to do kind things, that we would dare to do great things, and that we would seek to serve the God who knows us so well. So search me, God, and know my heart. Remind me that you are there. Amen.